What's up everybody and welcome back to another tutorial in which we create a 2D orthographic camera in order to position our sprites on the screen. Last time we left off with hot reloading the game and on this time in order to make a camera I want you to switch over to the rendering interface and then add a new struct here. Orthographic camera 2D below the renderer structs and then a vector to dimensions and a vector to position. And so the dimensions will correspond to the size of our window and uh, that will be the size of the world. So if the size of the window, let's say, is a thousand, our dimensions of the camera are 300, let's say, in width, then our world, our pixel art world, will be playing around a width of 300. So basically we are setting the dimensions of our window even if the window is a greater size so now that we have the camera i want to add that to the render data structure we want to create an orthographic camera 2d for the game and one for the ui we don't use the ui camera yet but we will use that in the future so i'm just defining it here already next we need to create a matrix 4 to calculate the projection basically what will happen is we have the vertices and then we need to transform the vertices from our quad and basically scale them and position them correctly based on where the camera is positioned and so in order to do that we need to create a matrix that we then multiply by the position of the vertex inside the shader and then we don't have to worry about where or how to scale the quad that we draw at all because that is all done by the camera for example what i used to do in my game which is very bad i had this world offset and world scale factor then to whenever i drew a quad in my game i had to take the rectangle and then multiply that and add the offset that just quickly grew out of hand it was very bad okay once we save the file i want you to go into the schnitzel lib below here on map stuff i want you to create a struct mat4 i've quickly pasted in the matrix 4 we create a union basically what a union is the members of a union are memory aligned which means that the first value in this vector 4 array corresponds to the first value inside of this structure right here and so that is very powerful because it allows us to index our matrix for as an array but also target specific components like for example the ax bx cx and dx components and the way you define these names corresponds to row or column major unfortunately i've done this a long time ago and so i don't know whether this is column or row major if you guys know Please let me know in the comments. Uh, but anyways, you can see that we need a vector of 4 in order to complete the matrix. And I'm quickly going to paste that in too. Okay, so I've just pasted in the vector 4. And as you can see, it is another union which holds 4 float values. So basically you can index into it. And then you can also index into the components or access the components directly with X, Y, Z and W. And then I added in another struct, for example, if you want to treat it as a color. Okay, and now that we have the vector 4, it is time that we can now create the matrix that will transform all of our positions on the screen into the space of the camera. This is not only a projection matrix, but also a perspective projection matrix or an orthographic projection matrix. A quick overview of how an orthographic projection works can be found on this website, the LearnWebGL one. Uh, I'll put this link into the description. Basically, when we create a matrix, the diagonal components are the scale in X and Y and Z. And then the very bottom one is the perspective divide, but that is also a scale, but we usually just supply one here. And then over here, if we scroll down further to what the orthographic projection actually looks like, these are the dimensions from left to right and top to bottom and far and near plane. So if we, for example, supply a camera dimension of uh, 320 in width and then 180 in height, these are actually, if you multiply them up, uh, by multiples then you get to 1080p and so uh, we will be using those coordinates by the way or these dimensions and uh, so basically what we have to do the only thing we have to do and if you want to you can go read through this entire thing we have to fill in these coordinates into our matrix and so effectively what this does is it gives us the dimension or the width the height then the depth 
uh, the def would be 0 to 1. And you can play around with these values, by the way, if you want to. Because uh, some very fun stuff can happen if you change the sign here. You can flip the top and bottom part, which is very funny. Uh, you know, if you want to play around with these values. But I'm going to show you the implementation now. So we switch back over to the schnitzel lib. And then below the matrix 4, we start implementing our orthographic projection matrix function. We start by creating a matrix 4 orthographic underscore projection function that takes in a float for the left, right, top and bottom parts. Then we create a matrix for result on the stack and the AW component, which is the top right component of the matrix, gets the minus right plus left divided by right minus left and result.bw gets top plus bottom divided by top minus bottom. Uh, the result.cw is the near plane of 0 and then result on 0, 1 and 2 are basically all of the scaling operators that we've seen on the web page before. And result on 3 is the perspective divide which we will always set to 1. Now you might have noticed that these give us errors because we do not provide a proper operator to index into the matrix and into the vector 4. So we have to add these operators to those structures. On the vector 4 we add in a float reference operator with the open and close brace, takes in an int index and then returns values on index. Then we go down to the matrix 4 and then below the union we create a vector 4 operator that returns a reference taking in the column and then it indexes into the values on the column. Okay, and now our orthographic projection is already done, which means we can already use it on the GPU. In order to do that, we need to access that in the shader, and so we need to add this to the vertex shader. So we open up our quad vertex, and then up at the top where we get access to the uniform vector 2 screen size, we add in another uniform matrix for orthographic projection. And then we go down to where we assign the GL position. And instead of doing all of these things here, the only thing that we have to do is use the ortho projection and multiply that by the vector 4. And we can get rid of all of these conversions using the screen size. Now, obviously, we have to also get that uniform in the renderer and then supply the data from within the render data to the GPU. So we open up the glrenderer.cpp file and then inside the glinit function where we get the screen size ID, we also want to get another ID and in order to do that, we switch to the gl context and create another glu and ortho projection ID. And then we switch back to the uniform section and we assign the gl context ortho projection ID to the get uniform location, taking in the program ID and then we need to supply the string which we get from the shader, the ortho projection. Now that we have the location of the projection matrix, we also have to supply the data and we do that by going into the GL render function just where we do the uniform float vector 2. We also have to supply the orthographic projection. We create the orthographic projection by taking in as the left component the position of the camera minus the dimension in x direction divided by 2. So basically minus half of the dimension in x direction and then for the right one we do the same thing but we go half of the direction to the right and we repeat that for y. Uh, so basically what this means is the origin of our camera is in the middle of the screen. If we have a dimension of 320 and uh, 180 then we go to the left by 160 and we go to the right by 160. So basically over here to the left we are on minus 160 and on the right we are on 160. This is usually how the origin point of a camera is by default and then you can change this origin point by changing the position of the camera. You could also decide to leave the dimension on zero. Basically the left plane is zero and then the right plane is 320. You could do that as well. So basically what you would do then is you don't divide by two here and leave this on zero. And then the far plane or the right dimension is just the dimension. And you could do the same thing with Y, which gives you the top left angle. And this is what we will do for the, and this is what we will do for the UI camera. But for the game camera, this is how we're going to calculate the orthographic projection using the game camera. And then after we have calculated the projection matrix, we supply the data to the GPU by calling GLU uniform matrix for float vector that takes in the projection ID that we gathered earlier. Uh, we want to supply 
one and then we have to fill in whether we want to transpose the matrix and after that the pointer to the very first element of the matrix which is aw if you try to run the program and uh, look into the window there should be nothing and that is because when copying the matrix to the gpu i'm supplying aw i should be supplying ax the first component there's one last thing that we have to do and that is actually setting the dimensions of the camera and i would like to do that in the game so in update game i want to have some sort of initialization and i want to have some sort of game state that tells us whether it is already initialized or not so in order to do that we go over to the game.h file looks like i have accidentally put this here yesterday without deleting it if you catch that then uh, get rid of this uh, actually don't get rid of this if you catch that then um, please ignore that from the yesterday's tutorial if you got confused then i'm sorry uh, i want to basically use a game state yes but there's no need for a game state at the moment uh, other than a boolean if it is initialized which by default of course is false and so obviously uh, we need another section here that is the game globals and then below that we do the static game state pointer game state this also means we have to supply this from the main to the game and the reason why this is a pointer is quite simple the game state holds the current state of the game if we reload our dll file if we create that again then the game state would be reset to zero every time we rebuild the game which means that we lose all of the progress that we're currently debugging for example and so that is why we hold the data on the engine side in the main file and then supply that to the game as a pointer so that whenever we reload the game the data is still there it is not say it is not lost so yeah, supply the game state to the update game function, the pointer here, and then copy that over and go into game.cpp and update the function there too. And then unfortunately in the main we have to do the same thing where the update game wrapper needs to use the game state too. And there we name it in game state in. We supply that to the update game pointer and over here we also supply that game state which we have to now allocate as part of the initialization of the main so basically we allocate the game state using the bump allocator and the persistent storage and if we are not able to do that then we return an error saying failing to allocate game state and then we return minus one i want to quickly make sure that i named these correctly because this should be called game state in in the game.header file and then in the game.cpp file I also want to make sure that this is called game state in and then whether render data is not the same we set the game state into games or we actually set the game state to game state in and then there's another if check for the game state if it is initialized or let's say if it is not initialized then we want to set the render data of the game camera and we want to set the dimensions i want to set this to an array that contains constants which is a world width and a world height. These width and heights are going to be constants that we use throughout the game. Uh, so we go up to the game constants section. We create a const int world width, which is 320, and a const int world height, which is 180. Then I also want to do a const expression int tile size, which is 8. We are going to have 8 by 8 tiles in the game, and these will divide our width and height into a grid later on. But for now, this is what we need, the world width and height. And we store that in the dimensions of the game camera if the game state is not initialized. And if it is, then we are going to do game state initialized is true. So that we only do this once. If you try to run the program and uh, look into the window, there should be nothing. And that is because when copying the matrix to the GPU, I'm supplying AW. I should be supplying AX, the first component. If you build the program now and then run the program, uh, you will see a dice in the middle. Which means the origin point of our camera is at the very middle in the screen. And now if we change the size of our window, it will get squashed. This is what we want to have for now. And the cool thing about this is that we can now position the elements inside of our game world and we are unaffected by whatever size of a screen we have. And now we can actually only move the camera and then these cubes move relative to the camera. Then we change the render data game camera position on X. Uh, let's say to 10. Then the 
dice will move. You see that? How it moved? Let's set that to 100. How it's moving further and further to the left. And at 160, it should be at the very edge of the window. See this right here? And now that means we can move our camera and these things will move relative to it. And we don't have to worry about any scaling, any offsets, nothing. Very nice. And then there's another thing that I would like to do is when we draw a sprite. I do not want to have to supply the size of the sprite because we already know that we want to supply a sprite and we want to draw that. If anything, I would like to supply some sort of scaling factor in the future. For now, I don't even want to supply that. I just want to supply a vector to position on the screen and uh, the size will be determined by the sprite obviously now we get a problem here because this uh, because this sprite size is an integer vector 2 and the size of the transform expects a vector 2 and so i want to quickly go into the schnitzel lib and then create a function below the vector 2s that converts an i vector 2 into a vector 2 it's a function that takes in an i vector 2 v and then returns a vector 2 caster to float and then i want to use that in the rendering interface to change the sprite integer vector 2 to a float vector 2 and the cool thing is we can already do that while the game is running because of hot code reloading watch this the game is still running we have a bunch of errors that we need to fix for example this is the position and now we don't supply the size and if we are building right now, it should just work. Let's position this somewhere differently. Let's say 10 pixels high. And that would move it down. It still works. Very nice. Now there's one last thing that I would like to do. I want to center the sprites around the position. Which means I want to do a minus here on the position and i want to divide the size of the sprite by two which basically will center the sprite around the position and then draw that around itself in my opinion it is easier to work with that and in order to do that we need to have another vector 2 operator so we'll put this in here we define a vector 2 operator division operator that takes in a float scalar and then returns the x divided by the scalar and the y divided by the scalar which will now tell us that this is implemented but we also need to create the minus operator and then if we switch back to the rendering interface there should be no errors and we should be able to build which should move the cube to the left and up which it does cool now if we go back to the game and we draw the quad at zero zero it should be in the middle of the screen and in order to test this i want to set the x and y position of the camera to 160 on x and 90 on y which is half the dimension and now the cube is inside the corner in the bottom left right here which means it works cool and this is how you can make an orthographic camera so yeah if you have any additional questions about the orthographic camera feel free to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video of course leave a like and subscribe for more and see you tomorrow peace